Hello and welcome to uh, Simple Ken. We have the lovely guest, Mr. Kanan Gill, and a third one, his new book, Acts of God, releasing soon, 18th of January, I think. Welcome, Kanan, and uh, thank you uh, for being on the show. It's my pleasure to be on the show. You want to talk a little bit about, hey, is this a new studio or like what, this what's is, going on? So there's a plan to uh, eventually make a, a Simple Ken studio and have like a proper logo and not a TV. Hmm. But, you know, I thought it'd be nice. Hmm. But at the same time, I don't want to fall into... A trap. A trap. I don't want to fall into any traps. Co- yeah, bad traps. Anytime I see a trap, I'm like, <laughs> I'm not falling into this. <laughs> Content creation trap, bad trap. So I'll figure it out. But for yeah. now, actually, I always want to do this early. I want to just record it at home. Yeah. Is this more convenient when you have a team? You always done from the starting high can simple can very high production. Yes. Very expensive. Yes. You own all this equipment. Yes. All these mics, all the camera. Yes. So my question to you, Kenny, is how do you make money from the <laughs> podcast? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is I don't. It's a. Uh, it's. I, I learned about zero sum game. Yes. From this podcast, like whatever money I put into it, I lose it at the same rate. That's why, dude. So it's an equilibrium. With this book, also, I was literally just answering an interview yeah. before I came. They were like, and the question is, what is your agenda with this book? I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I have no agenda with anything. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's very rare. It's not a fun answer when you tell people you're only doing it because. For the sake of doing it. Yeah. There's no other... Like you wanted to write a book. Actually, that's we're what... We're lucky I'm, enough to do things for the sake of doing them. Yeah. So it's such a disservice to us ourselves to not do it. You know who's the luckiest? Who? Lucky. Lucky. Ali. <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's very fortunate. <laughs> yes. Very fortunate. He's lucky to be... <laughs> lucky <laughs> lucky to be Ali. Dude. So I asked questions on the Instagram page. And I got... Because your fans are very nice. Your audience is very funny and witty like you. And they have all cute, cute, quick answers. Very quick. So okay. I'll do, I'll start off this episode in a quick pace. Uh, obviously, we're here to talk about your book. Uh, but who reads nowadays? Nobody. Okay. That's why I write. So, <laughs> so we have to, uh, I was going to say circumnavigate, but what does that mean? <laughs> navigate. Navigate, right? Yeah. Why is this circum in it? I guess with this relation to the world, maybe the that's how they came out. Yeah, around the world, the globe, circumnavigate the globe. So globe is globe shaped, a yeah, geoid. I need to read more. I wish there was a book available right now. Oh, Acts of God, available on Amazon. It's I although I should I thought this was obvious, but it is fiction. Oh, like at the amount of people who are like, yeah, so it's like stories from your life and stuff. I'm like, no, no, it's it's fiction. That's fair though, because... Yeah, they would assume that. Yeah, right? because that's a whole another profession. Sometimes I get mad that people are not inside my head. I'm They're like, not inside d- your head. They didn't. How did you not know this already? Hmm. I thought it several times. That's true. Yeah. That is the cause of most fights in relationships. It's like, why can't you read? Yeah. I'm like, this is... I it's very obvious. clearly said this to myself yesterday. <laughs> Where were you? <laughs> it's <laughs> obvious. But yeah, to, I think most people expect comedians to make a autobiography... Or like a funny... A group of funny essays. And those books are very often fun to read also. Yeah. But this is a very... This is... I've been wanting to be an author for a very long time. This is a book of fiction. I, it's got a lot of effort and love in it. And I care about it very deeply. So... Oh, don't, that's don't where... That's where you messed up, dude. You can't... <laughs> you can't care about something so deeply because... Then if it doesn't go your way, you, you'll get hurt. My fun with the book is over. The is book has already gone my way. I wrote oh. it how I wanted to exactly. So now it doesn't belong to you anymore. It doesn't belong to me. And it is my responsibility though to promote it before I didn't do this part. Yeah. Before I would be like, I made it. Yeah. Now, why should I promote it also? Yeah. Now I feel like it's my responsibility to a little bit promote it. And I'm proud of you, man. I know it's been hard for you. It has been hard for Promoting me. stuff. <laughs> yeah. I know this is like the most chillest way of doing anything related yeah, to Yeah, I'm glad. I'm so happy. about the book. Just hanging out with you. I'm like, I can do this. We were doing this yesterday. This is why, <laughs> no, honestly, this is the best reason. When you said, hey, can I promote my book on Simple Ken? And I was like, man, I feel I created Simple Ken for it to reach this point. Because there's no better way to promote anything else, which is on your friend's first book. 
Yeah. I'm so glad I have a podcast ready to do that. So, your so. your audience has asked the questions around the book as well. Uh but I found this very <laughs> interestingly phrased. Okay. Kanan has not given direct answers on why <laughs> he has become a comedian. Or a comedian? Yeah. Not an author. No, no. Uh, this comes to the huh. author thing also, but Kanan has not given direct <laughs> answers on why he became a comedian. And then I also thought I would like my lawyer to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That I actually even I don't know. I know you love jokes and you love the act. Yeah. But as you said I've heard you more saying you want to write books and yeah. movies more than actually I've never caught you saying oh I always wanted to be a comedian. I didn't always want to be a comedian. Yeah. I really like it. I enjoy being a comedian but I found it along the way. Uh-huh. Uh I used to have a I used to love writing stuff. and before when i was a kid i used to only write wait for my english composition class and for english language exams because you to be able to write stuff yeah. in a prompt and i used to be like wow then one day i was like i can do this without the exam also <laughs> i can do this okay. so in school i don't know it was such a big revelation to me i think so i started writing was stuff was it a constraints yeah it's 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 fun to have the the direction of write this comprehension yeah. but now we're like hey i can Sometimes you don't know whether you're allowed to do the things that you're forced to do also. Yeah. If you, you know, like there's a lot of careers that I didn't know we were allowed to take besides engineering. Yeah. So, like when someone is a lawyer, I was like, "Oh, you can be a lawyer also." Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> and if what you say is true, like in school you're so used to being told what to do. Yeah. In my entrance, I won't call it exam, test for my painting college. Yeah. The question was draw or paint anything. Hmm. And literally for the first 10 minutes everybody was like Anything? Anything? <laughs> and everybody was just like looking around, and very few of us just started. Yeah. And many of us like, wait, is it landscape? Hmm. Is it? And that's when it hit me. Like, it's so sad how uh, it's scary to be like, wait, I'm allowed to just do anything, and yeah. I, what's the catch? Um, yeah. So I think that's similar f- for me also. That uh, uh, film and this film was shooting videos was first love, telling stories. and stand up was so much fun and cool yeah that we happen to become stand up comedians and thank god for that yes yeah, so i also have a blog uh, i started when i was in college and i used to really enjoy writing blog but i used to really like bully people to read it cuz oh. like if your just blog is just there who's going to find your blog nobody who's going to read your blog no one yeah. so i used to call my friends and be like i wrote something go read it right now and i used to wait i'd be like did you finish reading it yeah. and they're like yeah it's very good i'm like leave a comment <laughs> saying you liked it yeah and so i was able to generate some traction with a lot of effort from my part for that blog cuz i just i was like i have no idea what people think about this it was so important to me so you have a need is, to, is that yeah. the case now no no <laughs> okay. uh, it's a part of the case but you have the need to create and the need to you know be, be validated yeah. on what you've made yeah. and so the need for validation was on par at the point yeah and so as to it was like pretty exhausting i was like i love writing this stuff but it's so much effort to make people read it yeah. and if they read it and don't comments i'm looking at my google analytics i'm like i know 400 people read this today <laughs> why is only one comment <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah. somewhere along the way i mean i i started writing less and i found stand up i mean you know the feeling of going on stage first time in stand up and you suck and uh, not you everyone sucks and the first time on stage you're bad but you panic and maybe you'll do something and they laugh and you're and like, like oh it's immediate i immediately know whether it's good yeah and that was like it was so exciting so yeah that's the best and worst part of stand up that it's the instant gratification is uh, so instant that it ruins all other professions yeah so you kind of all comedians have this pattern where they kind of do other stuff but they always come back to stand up because they're like dude i just needed a quick way to experiment with this thought i get the response everybody's happy i can go home yeah versus writing a movie and you might see it see the reaction a year later that is if you sit in the theater with the audience yeah if you have the privilege of having it released so one of the questions obviously is from Yes, Salvan Weiss. Ye Weiss Salvan Weiss. What inspired the book? So what the way, inspired the book? We don't know what the book is about. The book is uh it's a fiction book. It's fiction. I guess you could say it is a comedy sci-fi. I would say speculative fiction or if I may be so bold, literary fiction, uh, but I won't be so bold. Um it's essentially uh, very hard to uh give you a one-liner that doesn't 
in some way ruin the novel for me also i'm really enjoying the suspense that i'm making oh like, then don't what is it about but then basically just, what do you want them to know about the book before reading uh, it's uh, very funny it's a thinly veiled conduit for my philosophical opinions like everything <laughs> else i do <laughs> and uh, I, it's uh, us, i really surprised myself with this book this book represents why something very important to me it's like i was somewhere i was someone different before this book mm-hmm. and i became someone else so i could write this book like i was i figured something out uh, that i can't articulate wow. but something happened to me and i was like now i'm ready and uh, also very important uh, not a easy breezy reading book it's a little challenging uh, it's a little dense not to say it's boring but it will require some effort on your part it requires attention to read the book parts of it are very dense and that could have been removed during the editing process and i did not yeah. because i was like everything all access to entertainment we have is easy everything is easy entertainment and that's fine and it has its place but there should be some place in your life for difficult entertainment also where uh, <laughs> difficult entertainment. difficult entertainment yeah. something that it is not easy to access that you pick the effort and yeah. you feel like i from making the effort to gain access to the space of entertainment have subconsciously been altered in some way sometimes you very consciously you're like oh i learned this because of how this guy shoots a film or writes a book or whatever but subconsciously you won't know immediately but you've been altered because uh, you feel like there's a give and take there's it's not yeah you feel like take. you earned access yeah. to this and that's also fine this is also not to say that is damn difficult to read or something it's fine only medium yeah <laughs> No I get what you're saying. Yeah. Uh it's also those kind of books uh have a high payoff. Yeah. Yeah, because you feel like you uh, really put effort into understanding it and the it doesn't most, feel hollow. Yeah, abstruse opaque novels have like fan clubs where people quote them for like hundreds of years after that. Not saying that'll happen with this book, but I'm like there is a very direct correlation between uh uh <coughs> how hard this thing is and the level of devotion that it inspires but the audience gets more and more limited yeah and i'm okay with that <coughs> that's the yeah. price there's a there's a drop off it's like guitar lessons yeah there's a massive drop off but the people who stay get rewarded much higher because you you feel like you got through a hell that on everybody did and again it's not like uh, i quit guitar lessons in 2 months <laughs> <laughs> it's not romanticizing <laughs> difficulty but uh, yeah You're right. Like there's so many easy, you know, not even easy. Like to a point, it's optimized. Like I'm sure they do book readings and they like we kind of felt like readers struggle in chapter four, so kind of kind of smoothing yeah. out chapter four. Yeah, literally. Like this, is some of the feedback, and yeah. very often I would incorporate the feedback, and equally as often I'd be like, nah. What is the f- uh, feedback you incorporated, and what did you? Uh, there's a lot of the book which is things that were obvious to me that needed to be explained more. So a lot of the rewrites were based on that. Uh, this is the seventh draft of the. Oh, uh, yeah, seventh draft. The second was the only major rewrite, and after that, it's just been like small, small tweaks just to explain stuff, explain stuff more. What was the no way? This is a line. I'm not changing that. Many. Oh, many. So like with the, the first round of edits I would get like huge highlighted sections of text like very long. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I would look at that and I'm be like okay am I being indulgent here oh. and can I cut something out and very often I could but uh, yeah sometimes I was like nah this is is meant to be like this because it came like this to me. Okay. Usually how when you speak to somebody who's written a book how it goes is that the person speaking to the person has read the book. Uh, yeah, why is that, Kenny? The thing is, I've not read the book. Did someone send you a draft of this novel two years ago, and you didn't read it, Kenny? Which is not a reflection. I feel very bad that I haven't done it, but no, as uh, long as you feel bad, yeah, <laughs> I feel bad. I want you to know that. But I haven't read the book. I have pre-ordered it, and uh, I feel like you know what? I've anyway messed up so much. Might as well just read <laughs> yes, the yes. published version. Uh, yeah, Scanna did send me a draft long ago. uh and i have trouble reading i sent you a draft of the novel i wrote before that also you didn't read that yeah this is actually a second yeah, book yeah that first one is not out yet i th- it'll be out after this but Why are you publishing that i thought you're not publishing that no i'm working on it dude oh yeah whenever i get time <laughs> so but at the same time people don't read so what we're going to do is we're going to focus on canon on this episode and you guys order it 
then you all of you read it and i'll be with you reading it and then, and then we'll, i'll tell you what we'll do another one after yeah. kenny's finished the book yeah. we'll do another one like a spoiler one yeah where you also can now openly talk about it because now people have read it yeah and the suspense and mystery you can i'll give you a one line of her of the book it's a cat and mouse game between creator and created yeah yeah and i know it's funny like uh, the first book and this book are very different subjects yeah and with the third one you're writing is not related to the first one it's fir- so it's doing on third one also and um uh i didn't even know that um, theology and mythology is such a big part of the last few years of doing research for this book and randomly we were talking about gods and stuff and then kanan is like oh yeah this is like that this is like that. and i was just like how do you how do you know something about all this and kanan like carry it's a goddamn book and i was like oh i was like man kanan really knows about theology and mythology um so the question is what inspired the book uh long winded answer to the point answer you want No because it's you've done three so far we brought up you know yeah. writing three three things so like a an inspiration for this particular book and also the 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 weight of how do you choose one what to write book. yeah yeah it's just an idea that won't leave you alone i think this is based on the inception of the book and the genesis of the book is a short story i wrote in like 2016 or 17 oh uh, when i first tried to start a book when i was 15 and it just it would get like 10 chapters in and then just die out and i would i did that so many times until i just got frustrated and gave up and i tried and every couple of years i would try and it would always be too overwhelming and so then i decided to just do like a training montage <laughs> for myself and i'll be like okay i start i write two short stories a day and i did that for years oh. so i would do like a thousand words thousand words and then i would start my day okay. and i wouldn't worry about making it good And it's a different story. It's yeah, I connected. wouldn't even know what it's about. I'll just write a sentence and I'll be like, eh. "Some days it would just go nowhere. Some days it would become a story." Oh, wow! Like that. Um, one of the stories, I remember writing it, and I was like, "Something. This is something." And I forgot about it. And uh, then when I was sitting to think about it, I was reading my old pages documents because now there are so many. Yeah. And so many of them are so bad. <laughs> mm. But I found this one. I was like, "Oh yeah, there was something about this." Oh. And so then I got the idea, and uh, yeah, so cool. Damn, dude. So, what inspired it was yourself. Oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> okay, so we're gonna deviate a bit from the book now. Mm. Um, so, these are some general questions, and uh, some are very. You know what? Can I just should I just read you the blurb? Sure. Okay. On the front, it says an audacious daredevil of a book, Raghu Karnad, author of the Father's Field. <coughs> Behind. <laughs> log minus b what does log minus b mean computer science people know and you'll know when you read the book vacuous detective p manjunath and his assistant hang wrestle with an inscrutable mystery pickling their world but their witless endeavors are pitted against the smartest person in existence self disgraced scientist dr krishna who creates and destroys universes the duo invariably inhabit luckily for them they have no idea about this or most other things Now as a cat and mouse game ensues between creator and created the genius scientist is limited by the precarious nature of existence while Manjunath is unlimited by his stupidity if god plays dice with the universe how does he handle losing and in classic canon fashion this is a very heavy topic with big while being very funny as one more paragraph oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> i don't know whether i should read it or not but i'll just i'll just this the last one is like Not about the plot; it's about the book. No. It says in Karan Gill's wildly entertaining and moving debut novel, a sentient wall struggles with the limits of artistic expression. A lapel pin's habit of always giving truthful advice results in utter chaos. A Danish police officer becomes the enlightened leader of a worldwide group of science haters, and a pill is developed to, to cure the human condition. A delightful alchemy of humor, imaginativism, imaginativeness, and philosophical provocations. Acts of God marks the evolution of one of India's finest comedic voices. Serving size: thirty-two chapters. Three point five percent plot skimmed. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Damn, dude. Are we in the beginning of something great? We always are. That's mad, bro. Yeah. We yeah. have lunch after this. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Shit, man. <laughs> like, book book aside, like now the book is out. Like, what is the like, what's the feeling? What are you excited most about? Uh, I you know I've no not not been thinking about it. Like, 
Are you excited about people uh, being invested in the story you've created and uh, making their own uh, kind of groups and discussing it? Are you like looking yes. forward to that? I if that happens, it would be so incredible. It would be so cool. Dude. It would be so cool because there's so many things that you want to communicate with people that we are limited by. Mm. Um, I mean, I'm not like, sure you could, and I do try to make stand-up shows about it or my stand-up shows end up being about it, or you could do this podcast and then communicate with people that way. But there's a way to reach, uh, people directly. Uh, and I feel like the most direct way, a counterproductive, a counterintuitive as it seems is, uh, through writing, because then you get to sit with the text and let it stew in your own head and ferment and you wake up, you're like, huh, sometimes people can, uh, get what you mean and sometimes people can read between the lines and figure out their own sense yeah. from what you meant and benefit more from that. Yeah. Yeah, because you do have a lot of uh, philosophy of life that leaks through your stand-up. Or oh, not leaks, like that's intentional. Leak is the huh. correct way to write it. I never, people are, I never intend, and you also know, you can never pre-decide what you're going to talk about. Yeah. It's, it seems it's what like you're going through in that phase of your life. Whatever is important to you yeah. will come out. And yeah. like this book also, like when I was waking up, I was like, I was, the plot is leaving stains on my pillow. So I was yeah. like, okay, this really wants to come out. Yeah. So fair enough. Yeah. So yeah, that's going to happen. And then people are going to get an insight of how you see life. And also it's very funny also. Um, I don't know. You haven't read it, dude. <laughs> I think it's going to be funny. I mean, the premise itself and the protagonist and the... P. Manjuna. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I have a detective. I know you for so long that I know... Uh, I know that this is going to be really funny and I know that there are many jokes that I would not get and I'll have to reread it. You will it. get all the jokes. And then I'll be like, oh, this is also there. No, no, you'll get all the jokes. And uh, yeah, dude, very excited. So, so there's no particular thing. What's like a very like specific... Uh, I'm sure you must be sitting and being like, oh, this this might happen. That'll be, that'll be fun. Like, is it like, do you want to bump into your favorite author? And he's like, hey, can I write a book, man? I have stuff, bro. That would be incredible. Who's that? Which is that? My favorite author? Who? They're all dead. No. <laughs> but I'm saying any author I know you meet and they're like, yeah, I love the book. And you'd be like, holy crap. Uh, any author who likes the book, I'd yeah. be like, holy crap. Right now, I'm doing a lot of Lit Fest, so I hope... How was that like, experience? I only did Bangalore Lit Fest. Okay. It's very fun. Yeah. I did it with uh, the first panel announcing the book with Dashan Mehta, who's written a book called The Mad Sisters of AC, uh, which you should read. Uh, it's also out. And uh, then, you know, you, you bump into authors and... Uh, I don't know, it's fun. I... I is there a know, vibe? How are they different from... It was very normal conversation. <laughs> like, you know what it's like hanging out in the green room, right? Backstage with a bunch of comedians. It really... the How people have... The longer people have been doing stand-up, they self-arrange, they coagulate into clumps. Where the newer people who just started doing stand-up are doing... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Running around making everybody laugh. Yeah. And in the middle and the more people who are... Have been doing stand-up longer... Don't feel the need to be funny all the time. <laughs> so you can be sit, you can be sitting and you know talking crap, obviously. But yeah, yeah. So you assume that there would be some symptom of that in the lit world also. But no, everybody's just like. And then where, what are you doing uh, these days? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, I have the random observation that I, when I went to Calcutta, yeah. Um, obviously, it's very cool to see how bookstores like a big thing. Yeah. And uh, people are like just socializing in bookstores, having coffee in bookstores. And then I'm, anytime we're going to Lit Fest, I'm just like, I'm going to see a lot of attractive Bengali women in the audience. And that's always the case. Just, I was just like, why are Bengali people so, such, so good at reading and smart? And they have the best questions also. Like, mm. you know, the most scariest part is after the interview with the author or anything, they ask questions. And... Some Bengali person will get up and have like the most earth shattering question. And then the author will be like, thank you for asking that. <laughs> I've been waiting <laughs> that, like, I live life. for those moments in Lit Fest. Yeah. Like, uh, I'll see a Bengali person. I'm like, you, you go get that. <laughs> get that question, bro. Because I know that that person has read all the books. Yeah. Twice, maybe. Mm. Um, yeah. So it's just a random observation. <laughs> I have nothing else to add. Uh, this is from... Dr. Megamind, is Zindagi like a sine wave? Is Zindagi like a sine wave? Yeah. Uh, experience is like a sine wave. 
زندگی از یور فل سی آر او اسکوپ سینفلکس از گیو اپ ڈریمس ڈیتھ از کمنگ لیس پارٹی man when i figured that out for is they said i was like now i can write the show i was really struggling to be like how can i fucking figure out what is the easy stupid moral for this show yeah. and then one day at bangalore international center 2021 i was oh. like yeah it happened on stage right before oh crazy yeah. crazy this is a very important question what is yeah. kanan and kenny's skincare routine this is from shweta 97 i have recently got into like moisturizer Recently? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How recent? It's pretty recent. <laughs> like <laughs> face or body? Both. I use the same one. <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> using a... Uh, by the way, you know there's a face moisturizer and a body moisturizer. Yeah, the but face I don't believe is, it. I don't believe it. No, I know people in the comments will be like, you guys don't know anything. I'm no, like, dude. My skin is, is uh, homogenous. It's, it's No, the face skin is thinner. You know, I think, I feel like people just say that and people just believe it. And I'm like, I, I'm never, when if, who is checking for skin thickness? Because see, with my face, I need to do this. With my, with my this area, I don't need to do that shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's actually really good logic. Yeah, <laughs> actually. <laughs> so it has to be thinner for... So shouldn't it be moisturized more? Yeah. So no, what I was trying to say was the face moisturizer is more expensive than body moisturizer. Yeah. So buy the cheapest body moisturizer. and buy like a fancy face moisturizer that's deep dude yeah dude i think once in a few years someone will uh, one of your friends will catch you and be like what is your routine yeah. and you say like, i don't do anything shut the fuck up yeah. and then they'll take you out and then buy your big box thing first you do this then you do this then yeah. you do this then you put this on then you put this on then you put this on and you do it for two days and you're like i have to live my life dude i can't <laughs> do this yeah. so then i figured out i can reliably and repeatedly use moisturizer fair i've had different boxes over the years okay which i've used for a week two weeks but not longer than that and so then These i thought this was a gift to you right i you, bought them you bought them yeah i see the people will take you and it's a fun thing it's so That's much fun true. to buy stuff yeah yeah people take you and then we'll go to body go to shop a lot oh yes up yeah uh, i really like all their stuff smells yeah yes up has a nice uh, 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 dystopian russian vibe <laughs> No, <laughs> it's like an old alchemist. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like in Max Payne, you go to an empty pharmacy <laughs> full of Aesop products. Yeah. yeah, please sponsor the podcast. Yes. Yeah. Um, Aesop, sponsored by Aesop. Simple Ken, brought to you by Aesop. So I also put moisturizer in my hair. Do you not is that weird? No, you don't do that. My hair is dead. I know, but it has oils in it or some shit. Which is bad for your scalp. No, no, it's not bad. It's... Anything natural your hair does is fine. Mm. I think moisturizer is more greasy. So I think it blocks your sc- scalp or some stuff. Don't do that. I used to do that. You used to put moisturizer in it? Yeah, because I was lazy. So I was like, I don't know. Same. Cream. I was like, yeah, cream, 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 yeah. cream. <laughs> cream. <laughs> cream. Why is that? Cream. 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 Sariga Gangadharan says, how is Karan so sane? Who says? <laughs> I mean, that is a perception. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know me, Kenny. How sane would you rate myself? No, that's not fair. What do you mean? No, the more you get to know somebody, you realize that oh, everybody has their ups and downs. Yeah. But uh, I think this is coming from a... I think what you... Your persona on stage, I guess, mm. is very sane. So what do you attribute that to? I do... I put a lot of effort to dis- try to discover the freedom from suffering. And uh, <laughs> it has been the, the project of my adult life. Freedom from suffering? Is how do you suffer less? Okay. Life is very difficult. True. In ways that it really doesn't have to be. Yet we are victims of some crime. Yeah. That is not apparent what the crime is. It's like in murder mysteries where you're stabbed. It's like you've been stabbed with an icicle in your heart. Okay. The weapon has melted away and you are just <laughs> left with the wound. <laughs> and there are so many <laughs> did you just think of that <laughs> <laughs> there are so many things that we are still like so bracing funny. from <laughs> so many injuries that are don't exist anymore that we are you are bracing from impact from things that may and will never happen we are wincing <laughs> from injuries that have already happened before that are long gone and sagri is really backtracking right now <laughs> <laughs> she like i didn't mean to say it <laughs> and i'll just say it's a, it's a lot of effort. i put a lot of effort into i really don't want to suffer any more than i absolutely have to and 
as someone who is just suffers when all of my suffering is unnecessary mm. i would like it for it to be just not there at all and yeah. so in searching for the answers uh, it's taken me on a trip around the world and i realized the human condition has always been the same 4000 yeah. 5000 years ago people were all like why is experience dissatisfying and i'm like yeah so then if we've all been having the same problem yeah you also feel part of humanity uh, not exceptional in any way your problems are the problem uh, the problem that exists with being alive yeah. as a person uh and so the fact that people have been working on this for thousands of years means their solutions are available and like, i seek them out actively like buddhism basically is like life is suffering they just like, like accept it no i mean it's more complicated than that uh, uh, oh yeah i'm just it is unsatisfactory i'm i'm being rudimentary but like yeah yeah that they like see you can't escape it so just accept it that's that philosophy is very complex it's I like it's a, there's a lot to it that's true yeah just for conversation <laughs> Yeah, but it's just like you'll find. But like, capitalism and like modern things, like fucking enjoy, bro. Yeah, but then who, who is really enjoying really? You know, it's like momentary. You know, you're sad. Now let's distract and do something and be yeah. happy for at least ten minutes. It's yeah. better than even being a sad for a few moments. That's one thought. Yeah, yeah. And I the, think you are capable of being happy, but it is. Uh, mm, you have to unlearn a lot of stuff that we. There's like one central mystery in being alive. Yeah. and it's the sense that you know the scene from men in black where in men in black one they pull this alien's ear and his face opens and the small alien there with control then he says the galaxy is on orion's belt yeah a kind of feels like the experience of life is that 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 you your identity is somewhere here mm. and you have a head and you have a brain and you have a body and you have legs and you have arms and uh, that small thing uh, can't possibly be the end of the story right how can mm. you have arms you are arms mm. and you are legs also yeah 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 and uh, anyway not to go into no, talking about is, stuff is. that i'm not qualified to talk about uh the sense that you exist in this one way i, I think the um the, my current project and i think lasting happiness lies on the other side of uh, realizing that we don't exist in the way that we apparently do hmm hmm And so that's why you should buy Acts of God. Nice. <laughs> available for limited. <laughs> so discussed at length in my novel <laughs> Acts of God. No, so that moment you have uh, you've had the my version of it is I think uh, I realize a disconnect when I get a like a like a small wound. Yeah. And then I look at the wound I'm like oh it's bleeding now and it'll, it'll scab and then look at it two days later I'm like I'm like oh there's a team. Yeah. That's doing it. I have zero control over it. and the team's going to heal the my body team hmm. it's going to heal the and it, it's a clear acceptance that i have no control over my own body exactly all i can do is observe but as you said it's my arm but hmm. it's not my arm uh, the dude in my head is getting to hitch a ride in this body and the body is fully independent like if it was up to me if i had to follow <laughs> up, like heal faster <laughs> yeah. i would yeah. have totally forgot i'm like oh shit i didn't work on the wound dude. yeah Uh, so that's when I have the the moments of it's so bizarre that we're not uh, a part of the thing we go around in. Yeah, uh, and the dude in your head might not exist in essence in the same way that it seems to. And then at the same time, when I read biology, you realize that you know uh, every time Abhish makes a joke, I'll transfer my consciousness. I'm like, no, your consciousness is very related to biology, like. you being happy or sad is dopamine and all of these are like hormones which are related so if you remove the brain your personality completely changes like hmm. like canon being feeling melancholy is a cocktail of hormones a certain way which is biological hmm. so you can't separate your brain uh, so, yeah i yeah. i I'm, i'm not qualified to make any biological claims no, no, the, but the, i'm think like yeah the, the mystery of consciousness is like one way it's a very exciting mystery of course and i feel like the i can't believe enlightenment has fallen off the map of human ambition why man it was like our main thing because the rent is so high thousand. dude <laughs> yeah of course and there's no reason you have to separate those things and give up everything and go live in a mountain to find it uh, it's i think that happened during covid yeah when every everything stopped it started creeping back up hmm. and the opposite of enlightenment happening is everybody is getting nihilistic that during covid they experience what true life is which is just 
being and spending time and experience is this it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and, and, and what do you think is actually happening but in the negative way where people are like we should be chasing enlightenment but we stuck in this rut and we're never going to escape it so fuck yeah. everything i think you have to change the circumstances of your life but you can like reorder your priorities i think without changing the things that you have to do yeah. to live and make money and uh, it is all sometimes <laughs> i don't know what people do <laughs> I just feel like sometimes like when you're not in the place you want to be in life it's yeah. also a blessing something to look forward to and to work towards and distract yourself from Yeah I'm very happy I did like a misery speed run till I was 30 yeah. 20 to 30 misery speed run so I can be on the other side of it I'm like thank goodness Yeah Yeah So it's also nice you know sometimes I feel like when everything you get in life and you achieve everything and there's no problems you kind of go insane and then you start chasing artificial suffering of course Yeah Yeah What is the book dedication read in acts of god? Uh there's an acknowledgments there's no uh dedication as such there is no dedication. I mean it's dedicated to me right? It says to Kenneth Sebastian who will never read this book. <laughs> My ardent supporter even though he's not read it. Yes. We have uh, a little long question. Sure. Um this is similar to what we were talking about from Ankush Batra. Um Is that since I became a teenager I've had so much anxiety and stress and I keep overthinking about stuff. It seems that my mind can't stop thinking or calm down. I don't get the same satisfaction from things as I used to get before. Is it because of my age and does it change as we grow or is it because I get excited easily about things and overthink and have higher expectations which are never fulfilled which leads to me being unsatisfied. I thought I might I might have a higher threshold for happiness or satisfaction because maybe my taste change but maybe it's because I have mental issues like anxiety and stress. then hamper my day to day life so it's 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 all of it could be true yeah all of yeah. it he's very nicely hmm. verbalized everything that he's yeah it seems like a introspective dude who's talking yeah. about why and it's worth looking into man i mean y- y- your journey will be different there are some uh general notions that can bring everybody increase satisfaction but you have to first solve your own problem Yeah, yeah. I don't we don't know you based on this question. Yeah. And also we're not qualified to give you advice. You know, we're not giving advice. <laughs> yeah. I, I think like these questions also just make everybody realize we're all thinking the same thing. Yes. If there's one thing we can tell you is that bro, same. Normal. <laughs> yeah. Same. And you know, uh, there's this two um like the, I I don't know, it's not a term I really call it. It's called the th- the therapy irony. Yeah. That introspective people introspect. Hmm. They look uh deeply they break down what they're doing then they ask questions like what can i improve what am i lacking then they eventually do therapy but i'm like you didn't need it dude <laughs> like the last person of who should go to therapy are the people who go to therapy who is like this extra introspective like mm-hmm. i need to fix this i think something's wrong and then the other school is like i'm not saying a positive or negative i'm not saying mm-hmm. one's better than the other i'm just saying this is what's what happens and then there's the other school of people who don't introspect as much could be a good thing or bad thing maybe they're too narcissistic or maybe they're just like do i really have to think about stuff and this is going through the motions yeah and they're like i'm fine i don't think i'm great i'm bad either and they never come to the therapy place but mm-hmm. they should probably everybody should go for therapy and i feel like these two groups never meet but they hang out all the time yeah and it's awesome i feel like yeah, it's they're in a, relationships very often yeah, yeah it's a great ironic situation yeah where people who introspect more introspect even more but the fact that you're introspecting is great that's what is required yeah. people who don't introspect or don't reflect on things are just going through life but they are also causing a lot of problems mm. unknowingly both parties are but at least one party is stopping and being like hey should i be doing this and the other party should also be doing that but yeah. they don't yeah. but but the over analyzing people just get into this rut of constantly being hard on themselves and trying to be the best version of themselves and there's another type of person who's just this existing <laughs> yeah it's it's fascinating i think yeah you everyone could use a little introspection but also you don't have the tools necessarily to introspect correctly hmm. uh you can just be ruminating instead of reflecting and just being going like hi hi why me and uh, why does this always happen to me you oh. know you can be a very deep introspective but have huge blind spots in your own way of being that someone else has to look into your head and yeah. tell you hey stupid you can't escape that yeah you can't escape it you really don't have an objective point of view yeah. on what's going on with you so that's where someone 
should step in and help. But I also agree that maybe after some point there's diminishing returns. Of With course, yeah. Even yeah, you're like even a therapist will be like same shit again. <laughs> <laughs> same shit. I told we've been through this. You're like okay. But, but <laughs> I mean, if the therapist says same shit, I'm like, bro, is it I should be for therapy and be like, "Hey, hey, what did I talk about last time?" Yeah. <laughs> this only. Then yeah, <laughs> different solution, same problem. Hey, get lost. That's the, <laughs> my worst therapy session is when uh, I thought I'd overcome something. And I haven't. <laughs> oh, that's the worst. No. And I thought I was. I this is sorted. Yeah. And let me come. And as I'm saying it, I realize, oh my god, I'm talking about the same thing, but it's like <laughs> it's in different clothing. Um. So this is from Suraj. Uh, hi, Karen Kanan. I'm 24. I'm a bit lost in life. I worked for an MNC for 18 months and quit. Took some time off. I've exhausted my savings. We'll start mm. applying for jobs again. Yeah. But I want to get a creative job this time, and writing stand up is something I think I'll enjoy. Mm. So I want to know how you started the process of writing and how you wrote your first five minute set, and how do you overcome the mundaneness of repeating a set for a bazillion times, which keeps you going. Also, congratulations on the book, Kanan. You rock. Now, the part of the question I want to discuss. Yeah. Is that the mundaneness of creating and the ruthless. um routine that creative people are so averse to mm. um by the way I just want to clear I read books <laughs> okay uh just I, non-fiction I, yeah, I read non- a lot of non-fiction I read a lot of non-fiction yeah. cuz ironically I feel I get uh there's so less time and I yeah. love watching movies and yeah 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 so I I should read more fiction anyway the but it's very I really admire that about you which is um which is also like a good musician hmm. is you put in the time yeah for the practice the skills practice the sitting down and you do that with writing also just you saying that you used to write a short story every day that's so cool how you came up with that yourself hmm. and uh, how do you yeah this talk about that like that aspect of creativity which is not seen which is the i uh, that uh, it's very well to uh, almost like fetishize the image of the tortured artist huh. and looking from outside all of my he- literary heroes before used to be people who wrote one self one book and self de- self destructed mm. <laughs> they like spontaneously combusted after one novel and you're like wow and it seems almost uh, it used to be very exciting but then you get a job in the creative industry this is their livelihood mm. at least doing stand up and you have to be- realize like i can't just uh keep thrashing around in throes of misery saying like no ideas today no ideas today no mm-hmm. why when will someone understand my genius you've been like no it is my job i have to come up with stuff and so then what's important in that for me has been discipline i need to find some discipline uh, for writing my discipline is different for stand up it's different and you need it is your responsibility to identify your blocks and overcome them if you want to have a job in the creative field no one's going to do it for you and no one owes you to listen to your story of how hard your creative life is is hard for everybody yeah so now my creative heroes are all people who have written pg woodhouse or 90 books so i'm like yeah, that's what i aspire to stephen king's written more than 50 and sure it's easy to turn your nose up at whatever perceived lack of literary merit just because of their large output but i feel like it speaks to a higher evolved being a being who's evolved more because even if you uh, have spent your life writing one book but a life spent in misery is a life wasted i don't care who you are and i don't care how good the painting you made is if you were miserable your whole life that is not a good of your life because you didn't have to be hmm and i would rather you made shitty paintings and be happy and a hundred of them Hmm. Yeah. Was did you always think like this or it? No. Right. Because <laughs> the fun is to be. Like. Yeah. <laughs> because I remember pretentious was a very pretentious movie reviews was quite an arduous process. Even your stand up first few special used yeah. to be um, quite particular, which I didn't see as a problem. I was like, oh, this is why your stand up is so tight and good. Uh, So I'm surprised yeah, you're I, saying this. I would have gotten now. that without if I didn't beat myself up so much. Also, a lot of that misery was like manufactured. I'd be like, "Oh fuck, why isn't it better? Why isn't it good?" I'm like, "What a useless thought! Is it's not better? Then make it better. No, otherwise, shut up mm. and go to sleep. You can't write a one-hour special every day. Yeah, know your limitations. Know what you want to do and work on it. This is not to say I'm some higher being who doesn't feel blocked or 
uh, disappointed or sad about what I make. But you're not adding um. I'm really emotional take, baggage to it. Is this the thing that didn't happen today? We deal with a lot. I take myself way less seriously. I'm like, so what if this is not the best? Yeah. It won't be. It wasn't going to be the best anyway. This is as good as it gets for Kanan Gill. But uh, it's a it's a problem I'm also going through. Uh, touch wood, like I'm in. I think I've I've been in the best place ever in life, ever right now. And uh, I can see it, man. Yeah, man. And the problem is <laughs> <laughs> that. <laughs> what a great sentence. A lot of things <laughs> I thought were important are not important anymore. Yeah. uh and then stand up inherently the one of the strong foundations is the approval of the audience yeah and uh, that came very natural to me when i was young that oh i have to like before if i was ma- making a room laugh and like 90 people are laughing and 10 people didn't laugh and not because they are like mean or something i'm like oh i am not my joke doesn't have something for them yeah which is a very reasonable reason yeah. as to be like i'm going to crack them also yeah you know fuck yeah yeah that's fully gone now yeah now i see 90 people enjoying 10 people don't enjoy i'm like they must be having tough day today <laughs> <laughs> but that's true though yeah yeah and also it's good to think like that when you're starting out yeah and that's the true i think it's a necessary thing it's a necessary thing because actually when you're starting out you don't have the skill to make those 10 people laugh true now you know you have confidence that you can make those 10 people laugh so and you have to really give them the credit yeah. of like everybody has a tough fucking life dude it's actually amazing that 90 people were able to suspend their lives yeah. to enjoy my show and i'm very yeah. uh, happy that they're laughing and uh, cuz i'm like okay if i try to change everything for those 10 people these 90 people's experience also getting ruined it's okay life is great <laughs> just continue 90 people are laughing 10 people are not laughing what are the remaining 1100 people doing oh man they are <laughs> looking for the exit <laughs> Uh yeah and it's uh I'm navigating through that now because how to stand up uh your relationship with something that's inherently validation based yeah dude uh, how how do you look at it now but as you say, uh, the point is also that do you remember we did a simple can uh in like in the middle of the pandemic and I spoke about a stand up crisis and I refused to be forthcoming with what it was it was this But yeah. I felt like I undid all of this work when I was writing my novel, and I get back on stage and I'm like, "Oh fuck, man!" Yeah. And I feel like we're responsible for some of it. Okay, stand up is awesome; yeah. it gives you a lot, and it feels great when things are going well. But you draw this direct line of like, it's only good if people like it, which for stand up is very true. And people like it uh, very audibly. If they laugh, it's good. If they don't laugh, it's not good. And so the that part is fine. That's just the nature of the beast. I think from that we do this extended part, like. Uh, If they don't laugh, then it's not good. Then I'm not good. Mm. And if it is good, uh, if they do laugh, that means it is good. Then, then it's true, and then I deserve this. Yeah. And yeah, as long as you are looking for your value in the eyes of other people, yeah. it's not going to come. So also, it's much easier said than done. I think everybody knows this in their heart, yeah. but it does well to like remember it pretty frequently. I, I just you you nail it. Is basically the healthy thing that's happening now is we are not attaching. Who we are to a particular feel, but if versus actually now we're doing the really cool thing of recognizing what each type of uh, medium is good at. So writing is a great medium where you want to convey a lot of new information, which is complex, but you have complete control because it will be read how you've written it. Film is a very interesting medium where you can tell stories you can't tell on stage. Yeah, and stand up is a very interesting medium where. Uh, uh people get gratification very quickly might not be as deep might not be as nuanced um uh, and then you are like oh n- none of this is a reflection of me these are just tools and which is the best one for the story i have uh so we did a show in washington and uh, kennedy center kennedy center and uh, one professor of humor reached out and said i would love to talk to you and get my students to talk to you and uh, we spoke about comedy and humor and very so cool like america is so cool they have like a professor of humor and all right. of that and as we were talking i said something i shouldn't have said and they got very offended i said uh, stand up is inherently an inferior medium because hmm. you can't be completely honest um so it'll never be up there with the other things it's an entertainment thing and they were like i refuse what you did was the true art form uh, okay i was like okay i'm not saying it's not an art form yeah i think inferior is the wrong word but it is limited it's limited and the limitations are what makes 
Yeah, it, people enjoy it. Exactly. And the limitations is also what makes it hard and pleasurable to do. And the limit is very yeah. straightforward. Yeah. It has to be funny. <laughs> yeah, it has to be funny. Yeah. I, if I'm saying something from my heart, but if it's not funny, I cannot you say it. You can't say it. I you have to it. find a way to make it funny. But then at that point, it, there is a point where it's lost. What you wanted to say is lost for the it joke. It can happen. Like there are certain things you just cannot you do in stand-up. You cannot. <laughs> and, and I think I just retracted. I didn't argue with her because hmm. she got. She thought I was. I was. She thought I was being insecure about my own feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I think I do great stand up. Uh, but yeah, I think I, I have the healthy relationship with stand up now. That yeah. oh, I want to say this stand up is not the right place. I, maybe yeah. I should make it a video, or maybe write it down. Um, yeah, I think the limitations are like really good because it forces you to express ideas in the fewest words possible in the simplest language possible and in a way that it makes them laugh at the end yeah. okay so that constraint sometimes will make you only understand something in a way that you never did because you have to present it to the audience yeah. and you'll actually end up um, having a better analysis of a subject than somebody else would if they wrote a book yeah right and after but after doing that for like 10 years getting to write something where there were no rules was like i went crazy yeah, <laughs> yeah. i was like i can make this as long winded as i fucking like i can add i can use any language i so choose yeah. and i really did Man. i had a uh, so much fun because i was like i am free this answers our next question is how to pursue stand up consistently when no one's clapping for me i don't know how we did yeah <laughs> The Looking answer back, is, yeah. I was like, "How did we make it through all the times when nobody it's that, else, it's nobody that, laughed for like a very long time?" It's that young enthusiasm, that young arrogance of, "Yeah, I'm going to prove to everybody," which is very required in the beginning of your career. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's an unavoidable curve of. In the beginning, you just want to validate everybody, prove to everybody you're very funny and talented, and you have something to say, and then you reach one stage where you're like. Live and let live. And yeah. When you start out, you really have so much confidence based on ignorance. You're like, I'm actually the best. I've been doing this for three days, <laughs> and so I think that's what got us through the first couple of hard years, where you're like, they're just not seeing my genius yet. Yeah. Let me go back and work on my jokes. <laughs> and uh, then later, you're like, I don't know anything. <laughs> I have a fun question before I get to the next book question. Yeah. Durara Nanta says, if you developed a video game, what would it be about? I already did. uh once and it's on some computer uh, i made it with rpg maker it's a rpg called the prem game where you play as it's a, it's like the story of a bollywood movie so <laughs> that takes place oh <laughs> yeah so it's a rpg so your name is prem and prem game is so cool prem game yeah so you start out it's like if you played pokemon on game boy yeah uh it's like that you oh. have a little character and you walk around and then there's bullies in your college who fight in the canteen and you can you can choose bishum or dishum or whatever <laughs> it takes hp away and yeah i wrote out the whole thing and i made it during uh, using rpg maker and is I, it there online no i it's somewhere dude it's on some computer is there any developer who can quickly whip it now up? you can make it dude make it enjoy no with kanan reach out to kanan oh sure that idea. also yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it collaborated kanan he would love to do this he and anyway we coded most of it but you can get a no you don't have to code anything this is rpg maker so fully oh. dra- drag and drop yeah. awesome and the last question is back to the book back to the book i thought it was a cool this is the last question of the episode hey so, can you one second what if you made a video game oh man yeah you must have thought about this yeah we play so many video games yeah yeah right it's a mix of open world ha huh. but it's all the places open world don't let you go okay uh like i would just love a subway system underground stuff like a cave in, in cyberpunk i think you can go oh you can do that yeah. uh but it's it's constantly like the this the strange uh places in a city like i feel the most boring place is the street and the uh and i also i would love a game which lets you kind of like assassin's creed i felt stopped at the first beat yeah as a why can i have a game where each level is a different time zone yeah like one is in the 1800s one mm. is like prehistoric the next level is in the future the next level is in space i know it's a lot of work yeah but the same character and the same family dynamics but kind of like uh, what is that movie uh cloud atlas hmm. but the game cloud atlas the game man. Ka- the cloud atlas game yeah like, and it's the best one i would love to play that but third person third i love third person action I, adventure yeah. first person you know i don't like yeah. first person so i make manik play first person and i watch him That's yeah it. <laughs> it's it's yeah. icky 
you know first person. you may i get nauseous dude yeah okay sakshi's question is how long did it take him to write his book what was his daily schedule like for writing this is like porn for people who love routines i also love routines yeah. and i spent so much time researching routines to arrive at mine uh key aspect of routine do the same thing at the same time every day and do the same amount of work um same amount of work so some days you are writing i have four pages instead of two the goal is to do a minimum of 1000 words oh when i was writing the book every day yeah when i'm working on a book it's a minimum of 1000 words every day and uh, you have this architect gardener this is two ways of approaching a writing people have so many different ways to express the same thing but either either do you plan everything out before be write the book or do you make it up as you go along i for this one fully made it up as i went along first book you planned it planned it completely because mm-hmm. we've written so many screenplays and stuff that was like almost insane kind of no yeah yeah so then i wrote down all the characters want need where do they start where do they need to go these are all the chapters this is the plot i wrote a beat sheet i broke it down into chapters there were character <laughs> moments making it sound so simple yeah i wrote it the, it's not simple but it's like uh, you're actually writing the book before you write the book and then you sit down to actually write the text of the book i found myself just getting from beat to beat like i wasn't having fun that's crazy i feel like i was just transposing the i'd already written the book actually i knew what was going to happen and so i did write it for the first novel i wrote but it wasn't fun so when i started acts of god i um felt like a week or two before i started it um i tried to start it for several months and i would just flounder and die and cuz i didn't have any plot and and it was just the scale of it was so overwhelming that i would just write a little bit and i'd be like fuck leave it mm-hmm. and i would try to do the beats but i was like i did, no nothing yuck and a week or two before i actually did start writing the book i um something strange happened to me that uh, I don't know. Sometimes you feel like you have you gain access to a different way of being. Yeah. Um that uh, is very evident. And I remember I was standing in my balcony and I was looking out and I was just looking at a wall and I felt it shift. Crazy. And it was like okay, I'm somewhere new now. All right. That's and what I, you meant when you said Yeah, and yeah. I was like something has happened. And because sentences just fully formed sentences kept coming to me wow. and i think they always did but this way of being allowed me to see them to receive it yeah. and i was living alone and i was just just walk around bangalore for hours and just with this just watching all these beautiful sentences come and go oh you didn't immediately write it down no it just I, it felt wrong i was like let it happen and you're not worried you would forget it no not at all it just, i felt so much comfort and so much safety where i felt like i had access to like oh this is infinite things will keep coming all the time and uh, you really you tune your uh, radio to the ether and you will receive stuff all the time you already are you just need to pay it figure out a way to pay attention yeah. and i started walking around bangalore just being inundated with sentences then i started playing this fun game where i would look at really boring things and think of really exciting ways to talk about them just in my head and I don't know I used to walk like for hours every day and I used to walk all the way from my house in Cooktown to Blue Tokai which is in Indranagar and back and Blue Tokai also I would just sit with my coffee and I would just look into it wow. and just stir it with a spoon and then one day the first page of this book came to me it's the it the book opens with a storage instructions from the for this book oh, okay okay just this just this came to me store this book in a cool dry place alternatively you could toss it into a hot humid hell string its places on a cloth line or crack its spine over your knee if you feel violent punch this book in its book mouth how could it say that <laughs> hold this book by its jacket collar and demand more grab its feet and shake the hidden words out of its pocket um and anyway, take this book on a world tour hold it from a train window spring its pages like a flip book and smell that strange book smell that comes from the salty mix of ink and sweat and paper the bouquet of a story is it the smell of acceptance rejection writing rewriting editing fretting forgetting is it the smell of your own soul anyway it goes on for a bit uh, but the story instructions came to me and i was like this i need to write down got it and after that an allergen warning <laughs> came to me and i was like this i need to write down Then the preface came to me, and I was like, "This I need to write down." And then I was like, "Let's get to what the story will be about after that." So these things came to me. I came home and I wrote them down, and I'm like, "Tomorrow I'll start." I just want to add that the context for this is that Kanan's already written a book, so Sorry. I feel like you have. No, I meant that. Yeah. In, I don't want people to be like, "Oh, it just came to Kanan." It's because I think 
you had gone through the process of writing an entire book and rewriting it and then you put that aside and then you allowed yourself it's it's a, it's a lifetime of training yeah, it, in this book it like. just all aligned like when i wrote those two short stories every day i did that for years for years yeah until i felt like i had my feet on the ground and i was ready to start the first novel it's the whole when people hear larry david improvises uh, kobe enthusiasm i'm they like think, that's cause 15 years of seinfeld every word was accounted for then he was like now it's time for me to improvise but yeah. it's it's not because you so much knowledge is baked in into you now it's like second nature for you in stand up you have to get seen before you get good the only way you can do stand up is being on stage and you're bad in the starting very frequently and yeah. sometimes now also yeah and uh, with this work i was like i have the opportunity to get good before i get seen That's and true. i spent like a, a, a lot of years making sure i could do that and yeah i mean i really i enjoyed writing this book so much can i i can't even tell you yeah because i made the rule of like 1000 words and then very often i'd be like but i want to write more and i'd be like get lost leave it really yeah leave it get up and go oh. and at the whole day i would just be like wow <laughs> cuz i w- even i didn't know what would happen the next day and it was wow. very exciting some days i would cheekily write 2000 but mostly Uh, I stuck to a thousand, and I made it up as I went along. And it's given the novel an unusual structure, also, and weird pacing. And so, to answer that person's question, it's a current 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 form. It's about one hundred and five thousand words. That's one hundred and five days uh, of writing about. Then I I let it sit for one year. I did a rewrite, um, and then like whatever, six more rewrites after that. But man. after one year, that was a major rewrite. crazy man i think that's a great place uh, to end the episode i feel like we didn't talk about any bullshit yeah i don't know i think uh, we shouldn't no i think that okay. that middle conversation we had about suffering <laughs> <laughs> was very nice okay so i don't know we can't force bullshit also we're older can we more poised <laughs> Remember when you used to have fun? And yeah. Just bullshit no, no, no. Like that's yesterday. the thing. Now, <laughs> now we have fun off camera. Uh, but uh, no, it was very nice to see your excitement also for the book. And I hope uh, people also, you know, it's like uh, what Charlie Puth is doing, where he is now sharing the process of building the song and the hook. And now, and a lot of people said, "Why are you doing this? You're removing the mystery." And he's like, "No, it's the complete opposite. I think people." Uh, get invested in the journey, and when it comes out, it's a, it's a double joy. It's like oh, the songs come out, and I knew how it came. So I think seeing this now, if they read it after the after they heard what you said, yeah, they'll imagine oh, you know, every page kind of was excited to write. Yeah, uh, yeah. it'll add like that nice uh, extra icing to it. Yeah. So and if you are watching this and you want to write something, please go and write it. Nobody else can write your book; only you can. Yeah, you don't have to publish it. Just write. Just write it and keep yeah. it. Who <laughs> cares? No, you don't owe anybody anything. Just write it. Yeah, you know I've met Kanan's yeah. agent, literally agent, and he said the most funniest thing unknowingly. Huh. He's like, you know, Kanan actually wanted to write the book. It's not like <laughs> it's not like the celebrities who just write a book. Yeah. He's like, he actually, I was like, you have no idea, dude. That was a big fear with the book is that it would not get taken seriously. Yeah. I hope people take it seriously. They will. They will. Yeah. I think your your audience knows what a writer you are. Yeah. So. I don't think that they they're surprised at all. They were like, "It's about time." Yeah, I've taken them. so many turns over all these years of doing stand up that like on every corner some audience falls off. Yeah. So I think the few people who have remained, yeah. I think, will get it completely. They will inhale it like okay, and I feel <laughs> <laughs> they will like yes, can it have given us more? Yeah. Very cool. Uh, so thank you so much for listening to this episode and uh, all the questions that were asked in this episode. Where from the Instagram Simple Kin page, which I'm actively asking more, and it's so much. I felt the quality was nicer, and it was more directed to the guests. So please come there and write a question. You can obviously write it in the comment section. If you listen, if you just want to listen to this, um, and your eyes have disappeared, you can listen to it on on. Dude, Dashan has taken it down. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, because we swear and all. Yeah, yeah. They're having a hard time these But days with content. SoundCloud, I have to pay them. They keep it there. And uh, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast. Geo Seven. It's on Geo Seven also. Um, it's not on. It's on the No New Notifications app as well. It's on that as well. Yeah. Dude, don't get me started. Now everybody's gonna be upset with you. They're like, when is the next episode? I can't answer for It's you. It's called No New Notifications. Stop waiting for notifications. Kanan is like that. Um, what is that? Uh, I hang out with Manik like 
an inordinate amount okay? that's true and we were like we can't force it man <laughs> if it if we feel like doing it we'll do it man that's what we owe the people <laughs> this is so it's such a sadistic relationship <laughs> with <laughs> you made such a great podcast and now you don't give it to them <laughs> <laughs> we were like recorded hours of footage and we were like oh, oh no, we no just you should have said that <laughs> anyway thank you so much and uh, see you for the next one see okay, you bye. bye thank you for watching hey rated on all these apps thank you rated well yeah rated well oh, we can't ask them dude no. rated whatever you feel like no 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 rated well only otherwise all that conspiracy shit will come up dude yeah. all these other dirty podcasts this is nice rated nicely so you're saying trees are actually <laughs> 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 Time for simple